I saw a comment on somebody else's video the other day asking why there are people who believe it's possible to live perfectly, asking why they believe it's possible to overcome sin completely. Well, for one, the Bible commands it, and what God commands, He enables us to do. And Let's look at what the Bible says. In John 14, verse 15, Jesus Himself says, If you love me, keep my commandments. And this word for keep is a command in the Greek. And it means to guard by keeping the eye upon it. This is the same word that Jesus used when telling the rich young ruler to keep the commandments. But then Jesus tells us how we will be able to keep his commandments. Because you know what? In your own strength you can't, but in his you can. He says, if you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father to give you another comforter, speaking of the Holy Spirit. There are many who try to keep the Ten Commandments, but they fail because they don't have the Holy Spirit. And the word for comforter here is parakletos. And it means an intercessor or a consoler. Not just a comforter, but also an advocate. And when you read further in John chapter 16, Jesus further describes the office of the Holy Spirit. He's there to comfort us. He's there to convict us. He's there to point us towards what's right. The Holy Spirit is the representative of Jesus who gives us the power to obey him. In fact, in Acts chapter 5, verse 32, the apostle said, We are his witnesses of these things, and so is also the Holy Ghost, whom God hath given to them that obey him. The overwhelming cry of modern Christianity is that the law of God was done away with, which is false. But also, they claim that we cannot obey the law of God, which is also false. We can't obey it in our own strength, but we can obey it in the strength of God, through the grace of God. And if you want the Holy Spirit, then you need to obey Him. God will not give the Holy Spirit to those who are willingly disobedient to His Ten Commandments. And it's not about earning salvation, it's not about earning favor, because that's not possible. Jesus Himself tells us the motivation. He that loves me is he who keeps my commandments. If a man loves me, he will keep my words. He that loves me not keeps not my sayings. So you see, if we truly love Jesus, we're going to be keeping his Ten Commandments through his power. And Jesus goes on to say in the book of John how we are to keep his commandments. We abide in him through the Holy Spirit, through love for Jesus, through abiding in his word. We will be enabled to keep God's law. And so thoroughly that we will not be entranced by sin any longer. And understand, those people who, who love Jesus that much, they will never claim to be without sin this side of eternity. And for those who don't believe it's possible, look at examples like Daniel, Enoch, the Apostle Paul. In fact, if you search for the word abide in the book of John, most of it occurs in chapter 15. And Jesus tells us the result of what abiding in his love will do. If ye keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. You see, my friends, the Bible tells us in the book of Jude, verse 21, Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And if we let the Bible explain itself, the Apostle John says, For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not grievous. Other translations say his commandments are not a burden. Those who claim that it's not possible to obey the law of God, that it's not possible to overcome completely, they're looking at the law of God as if it's a burden to be carried. When the Bible paints obedience to the commandments of God as a service of love to Jesus. You know, if you love your spouse, if you love your friends, if you love your family, it's going to be a joy to do acts of service for them. And obedience to the Ten Commandments is no different. If you truly love Jesus, it will be a joy to obey all ten of the commandments. And the Bible tells us now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless. So my friends, it is not only possible, but it is required. Again, not to earn anything with God, but because you love God. It's the proof that you love God. And we'll get to why in just a minute. Abraham is another example of what God can get us to if we will just keep our eyes on Jesus. Yes, Abraham made mistakes, but God was able to get him to a point where sin no longer interested Abraham. God said, Walk before me and be thou perfect. Jesus told us the same thing in Matthew 5.48. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. And the Apostle Paul tells us that Jesus is returning for a church without spot, without wrinkle, or any such thing, that it should be holy and without blemish. 
But why? Why is that? Why does the Bible present such a high standard of holiness and righteousness? The entire chapter of Revelation 21 is about how God is going to recreate the earth and completely destroy sin, sinners, Satan, all of that stuff. In fact, Nahum 1.9 says sin will never arise again. And the reason God has such a high standard of holiness, the reason why he commands us in the Bible over and over again to be holy, to trust in him and to love him and obey him because of that love, it's because in Revelation 21 verse 27, the Bible says this, that there will enter into the new earth, there will enter into the holy city, nothing that defiles. Only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life will be in the new earth, will be in the holy city. So yes, God has a high standard of holiness. God will get you there. If you trust in him with all your heart, if you love him with all your heart, he will get you there because you can't do it on your own. 